they both sped through the ionosphere of the green planet, Buos was still trying to chastise Laloi. But like the airy, formless creature she was, Laloi ignored the criticism, rippling zephyr-like through a clump of daffodils as they completed their descent. Ah, oh, so pretty. She sighed, flinging her incorporeal substance around each flower, absorbing their unified beauty of scent, sight, and feel. Buos shrilled himself into a column of wind, expressing his displeasure at her attitude. Stupid, silly, shallow thing, he said. If the others only knew how you behaved. And you'll be glad to tell them, of course, she said, extending her fingers of air into the roots of the wind-bent grass. She rolled across the hill ecstatically, and Buos followed in grumbling billows of energy. I don't carry tails. He replied, somewhat mortified. But we're here as observers, and you insist upon making this world a plaything. I love it, she said happily. It's so warm and green. Buos whipped in front of her angrily. This is an assignment, he snapped, his emotion crackling the air about him. We have a purpose here. Purpose? She groaned, settling over a patch of crowded clover. How many centuries will this assignment last? This world is young said Boaz. It will take time. But how long? She asked mournfully. Our world will be shriveled and dead before these people have the knowledge to rescue us. Why can't we spend all our lives here? And leave the others behind? Said Boaz stiffly. Selfish being, he said sadly. This world cannot support one-fourth our number. Oh, I know, I know, Laloy said. I do not mean to say such things. But I am twisted by my sorrow. As if to express her self-abnegation, she corkscrewed out of the clover and into a thin spiral of near nothingness. Settle down, foolish one, said Buos, not unkindly. I know your feelings. Do you think I'm not tormented as well by the slow pace of these earth things and their crude, barbaric ways? They're like children playing with the building blocks of science. It is such a long way to go. And so few know, said Laloy despairingly. Only a handful of seeing minds and millions of ignorant ones. Not even first principles, they're stupid, stupid. But they will learn, Buos said stubbornly. That is historical fact. Someday they will know the true meanings of matter and light and energy. Slowly, yes, slowly. But in terms of their growth, it will seem like such great speed to them. And in terms of our world, said Laloy, spinning sadly over the ground, they might be far too late. No. In his excitement, Buos forgot himself and entwined with the flowing form of the she-creature, and the result was a rending of the air that crackled and sparkled like lightning over the field. No, he repeated again. They must not be too late. They must learn. They must build up from the very ground itself, and then they must fly. Then their eyes must be lifted to the stars, and their desire must extend to the whole universe. But it seems so hopeless. It cannot be. Our destiny is not extinction. They must come to us in fleets of silver and replant our soil, and send towers of green shooting into our sky, breathing out air. Yes, yes! Laloy cried wantingly. It will be that way, Buos. It will be that way. Look, that man-creature there, underneath the tree of apple. We will begin with him. Buos floated towards the ground disconsolately. He is only a dreamer, he said cheerlessly. His spirit is good. He thinks of tomorrow. He is one of the knowing ones. But he cannot be moved, Malloy. His thoughts will fester and die in the prison of his own mind. No, they can't. We have watched him. He understands much. He can help us. I have seen his like before, said Buos hopelessly. Yes, he thinks and he works, but his conclusions will remain unformed, all for the lack of a moving force. Then let us provide it, Buos. Let us move him, for this empty watchfulness will surely destroy me. Please let us try. With what? said the other hopelessly. Arms of nothing, hands of vacuum, a breeze against his cheek, a rustle of leaves, a meaningless whistle in his ear? I can feel it within him. He knows, he knows, said Laloy excitingly. But he has to find a way to say, this is so because, 
This must happen when? A new way for him to think. A new way for him to understand. They hovered over his head in a pandemonium of helplessness. They whirled and tumbled through the leaves, madly circling again and again, until finally, to Leloy, inspiration came. An apple, caught by a sudden gust of wind, twisted from the tenuous hold of the tree and fell to the ground next to him. The man, startled, picked it up. He gazed at it, deep in thought, and slowly, a new theory started to grow.